Welcome to my presentation on how to use digital tools better in our next event. So we'll try to utilize the learnings from the COVID year in how to prepare and make better events in the future. So I'll talk about the, our in the preparation phase. What are we doing? How do we collaborate? Do the meetings and share information. And also some ideas on how we can conduct our events. Do the team officials meeting, how we communicate and also some ideas around the TV production. My name is Henning Spielkavik and I'm a software engineer and I have experience from many different kind of IOF events and I started with World Cup in 1996 and uh, the walk the year after and my most recent uh, assignments have been uh, as an SCA at the WUK 2013 in Finland and as an assistant SCA for IT in 2019 in Norway. During the COVID year there were not that many events so I was a part of the team that created MapAnt for the entire Norway. So, on to the preparation phase. As a software engineer and product developer, we collaborate a lot. And I'm very fond of using a whiteboard. But that's not possible right now, or at least not together with my colleagues. So we started out using Google Jamboard, which is, was free, or at least included in uh, the suite we used, but also very simple. It turns out that if you have a physical room with the actual Jamboard, it's a quite cool tool. But for us, we found that Miro did a much better uh, job for us. And I've put here two examples of a post-it uh, bonanza and a mind map. But it can handle 20 or maybe 50 of um, users that are using it at the same time. So that's really, really good. We also need to collaborate on creating documents and presentations. And my favorite is Google Docs and the Google Sheets and Google Slides, so the Google Suite. But also many organizations have Office 365 from Microsoft with some traditional tools like PowerPoint, Word and Excel. And that also works. And both of these integrate uh, online. And these are very good at helping you collaborate and work at the same time on a document. There are also uh, functionality for commenting and suggesting changes for smaller improve improvements and in many cases that's a way to just improve a document by writing together, writing comments and suggesting changes. However, if there are multiple stakeholders and big changes that are wanted. The process of using comments and inline suggestions might become too chaotic. So in WUK 2019, the event director established a form and big Excel sheet where you put your name, the line in question, your suggested change and why, and then there was a process for actually making a decision and moving forward. So this is an example of word and track changes in the online version. And here is the comment and change log for the WUC 2019 bulletin. This is, as you might see, page 1 out of 29. So there were quite a few comments there. We don't travel to meetings in these times. So we use Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, might be the three most popular, at least uh, where I work and with the customers and the uh, stakeholders I meet. However, there is also a whereby used in some, by some schools. And if you'd like to um, self-host open source encrypted uh, video conference, Jitsi is an open source project for that. But it turns out that most people would actually like a service, so it's also available as a paid service. 
out of the gaming community, you got something called Discord, which started as a uh, audio uh, online collaboration or conference room, but it also supports streaming quite well these days at high quality if you pay a little. So for some organizations or some people, Discord might be a quite good uh, solution. So I have some teams that use Discord for the social uh, aspect of uh, their work and uh, after work uh, activities. Running an online meeting, the meeting culture is important. Everyone needs to mute when they're not talking. And it can also be a good idea uh, to decide before the meeting starts or in the beginning, decide how we raise questions and comments if you are more than four or five people. Many tools now have a raise hand function, which is very useful. It will also keep uh, track of who raised their hands first, so that the person uh, giving out the word and steering the conversation can have an order and let everyone participate. Waving at the camera was uh, quite common before we had this raise the hand function. Alternatively, a comment in the chat can also work. And sometimes we use an external service like Slido, where people can write questions, the audience can vote on them, and you have a presentation mode where you answer and check off the questions you have answered. It might also be good uh, in those cases to actually answer the questions that you don't have time to answer online, do it afterwards and post it somewhere. How do we collaborate on the forest work when we can't travel? So, a combination of GPSs, photos, maybe even video can be useful. And this could apply both to the core setter, taking photos of uh, sites that are suggested but not certain, or also for the mapper, where, where Maybe the advisor will ask for a photo of a particular area or a video and send it back so that we can collaborate on getting an even better map. Also, a national controller can be very valuable because the national controller should be able to drive to the terrain in many cases where an international advisor can't. So we need to exchange documents and sending documents on email, renaming them as new underscore new to whenever there is a new change isn't neither a very good process nor particularly secure. It's very, very easy to forward email. And by default, there is not much encryption or, or control or even authentication in a proper way. In book 2019, we use Dropbox for the technical documents. Um, it's when you pay for Dropbox, it's possible to share folders, invite, and you can have some auditing, and give access to certain accounts. However, if people automatically sync their entire Dropbox to all their laptops, and you also bring this laptop to a training camp where you might have elite runners, that's not so good. So be a bit careful, at least if you use Dropbox. Another service, which is more business oriented, and it's actually older than Dropbox, is Box. It looks like Dropbox, and my mental model was that it was like Dropbox, but it wasn't. But it has more security features, and similarly you can uh, give access to certain accounts. Also from Microsoft you have uh, OneDrive, and from Google you have Google Drive. And with the paid account, you typically have a terabyte that you can share. And uh, it's possible to share with specific accounts. And there might be change logs. So that can also be useful. The advantage of these services is that when they're set up correctly, it's not that hard cumbersome to work with. But if you need a really secure document distribution, um, corporate boards use these days often something called a board portal. 
it's also used in um, acquisitions and two examples is uh, admin control and data site and there the the administrator uploads a document and everyone who needs to access the document needs to authenticate possibly with two-factor or uh, official IDs like bank ID in Norway or Sweden all document access is audited documents are watermarked like you can see in the example on the slide so this is more cumbersome to work with uh, but might be a possible uh, solution for some kind of documents how to securely distribute OCAD files uh, I think the most secure is to not do not distribute them if you can avoid it and when you need to try to limit the area create a PDF export it to a file and be very careful it's so easy to forward or put them in the wrong place also a reminder of security practices use and enable two-factor authentication wherever possible especially for your email but also if you use a secure document sharing service because without two-factor authentication if someone guesses your password or for instance that password combination username password combination has been used in a service that has been hacked and the credentials are leaked on the internet it's so easy to hijack your account and take over however if you have enabled two-factor authentication even with SMS you will need to also uh, be in possession of your phone in order to take over your account and it helps tremendously also in my experience uh, Google and Microsoft spends more time and resources fighting spam and phishing than most other organizations and providers so it might actually be a good idea to use a quite big uh, email operator in order to have better fighting of spam and phishing also look out for phishing attacks the screenshot here is uh, from someone claiming to be Leho Halna but from a strange email address and Google warned me that this is not the email address of the Leho Halna you used to communicate with and I reported it as phishing and then you see there here this email is characterized as phishing and uh, Google then builds these uses these signals so when a similar email shows up it will most likely be uh, labeled as spam or phishing immediately so what will, will we do during the event can we imagine a hybrid team officials meeting why would we like to have that yeah, we could save travel time. It will mean also easier to have better infection control and social distancing if that's still necessary. It would require decent internet connectivity in the accommodations though. Another advantage would be that we might record it so it could be watched a little bit delayed if, if someone for some reason couldn't watch it exactly when it happened. And even we could imagine if, for instance, if you stream this on YouTube, we might have automatic subtitling if the English is sufficiently good. And you can slow down the video if the English is goes too fast for you. So it could be an effort that includes more teams. So this is from 2019. This is not social distancing. That was not a what we had heard at that time so how would I do this you could do it as a streaming for instance on YouTube put a camera on so that you record the people on the podium use microphones a microphone close to the speaker and perhaps a loose microphone that you can move around to the audience if you take questions from the audience or at least so that the speaker or the person answering the question is repeating it before answering questions could also be taken from an online tool like slido or for instance in google press uh, slides there is a function for gathering questions 
but even simpler would be to just use Zoom or uh, Google Meet or Microsoft Teams. In that case, it would be easier to have a dialogue between the people, because in a streaming situation, it's a broadcast, whereas in video conference, everyone can participate. But it definitely requires proper etiquette, so people mute and only talk when they have been given um, a spot to talk, so that we don't get uh, messy old people talking at uh, the same time. During the event, a secure communication channel can be very, very useful. And in 2019, we established several WhatsApp groups, which is encrypted and fast. Uh, we had between the results timekeeper and the speaker and media coordinator, and similarly with the producer and TV van. And that was very important in cases where we had high profile disqualifications, because then we could give a heads up on what's this? Is it a likely to be an organizer mistake or is it a probable uh, a jury case or yeah, some information and because TV and the commentators really want to know what's going on. Also a group within the SEA team, within the uh, race uh, direction, so event director, course planners, etc. could have many many groups. And also between the SEA and the jury uh, might be useful. In 2019, we used uh, WhatsApp, which is quite decent. However, it's owned by Facebook and some people uh, don't like to use Facebook products. So uh, WhatsApp was actually built upon Signal, which is an open source uh, um, instant messaging and also now even video group calls uh, system. So how would you speak one of these two? Can we even do remote TV production? So I don't think we will get rid of Carl here on the left, uh, who is the person running after the athletes with the camera in the forest. But there has there are instances of TV production being done almost entirely remotely. So horse racing in Norway are done with cameras, fixed cameras on uh, and remote controlled in the arena and the TV production being done in the studio. Saving travel and accommodation costs. If you don't move everything away, uh, at least I know TV graphics have been run remotely so that the operator sits at home or in the studio and uses uh, uh, or controls the graphics probably in the van but uh, by having a stream of what's going on, it's possible to do uh, that remotely. Commentary is quite common to do remotely, and that would probably increase, and we should be prepared for that. It could also mean that we could have commentary in more languages than when we have required everyone to be at the arena. But the more we move the more of the production we move out of the arena, the more vulnerable we are for poor internet connectivity. Will the quality of a remote production be the same? I would think it might be almost, but at least the collaboration and team spirit you get by being on site and during the event is lost. So, but it should be more cost effective and that might win and perfect is not always uh, what we need we need something that's good enough within our constraints uh, that is budget and people available so in the presentation of the event what will we do differently so i'm not sure i've learned that much I think that streaming production will still resemble a traditional sports broadcast when we have the capacity and budget for that and suitable terrains with uh, an internet connectivity and so on. Uh, we must follow the social media trends and uh, probably be where our audience is. And if we target the youth, uh, Facebook is 
the demography shows that uh, the Facebook use active Facebook users are getting older. So maybe we need the TikTok or whatever is coming up in 2021. Discord is also popular with some younger audience. Um, but could we try to integrate orienteering games in how we publish and uh, make a presentation of our uh, event like Running Wild, Tempo Simulator or Virtual o, for instance by using the terrain or a similar terrain in some of these games. It might be a way of uh, reaching either a broader audience or at least engaging more orienteers around the world even uh, if they don't have a local runner participating in the World Orienteering Championship. Maybe we could have a virtual uh, uh, championship uh, just before or almost at the same time as the physical one to engage more people. And after the event we should run conferences like this with an online opportunity. We reach out to more people and more countries with an online conference. There is no travel cost and lower time commitment. But what I really lack and long for is the getting to know people, the networking. That's harder to do when we're online. So I hope we'll have a physical high level event seminar soon. Thank you for attending. My name is Henning Spirkavik, I'm the chairman of the IT Commission in the IOF and good luck with your event.